Hi there, and welcome to this video on reverse percentages. In this video, we're going to learn the calculator method for finding the original price when we know there has been a percentage increase or decrease and we know the new amount. I've put the first question on the screen. A shirt has 15% off in a sale. This is going to be important. 15% off, so we're dealing with a 15% decrease, a 15% reduction. The sale price of the shirt is now $21.25, 21 21.25. What was the price of the shirt before the sale? So we know the new price, and we also know that it was a 15% reduction, and we're being asked to find the original price. So there's two things we need to be aware of for this method. The first thing is we need to be confident in finding the decimal multiplier, which represents a 15% discount, a 15% decrease. So the decimal that is associated with a 15% decrease would be 0 0.85. The reason for that is we start with 100% and we're taking away 15% to leave us with 85. And then in order to change percentages into decimals, we divide by 100. So therefore, the decimal I'm interested in is 0 0.85. So if I knew the normal price of the shirt, I would multiply it by the decimal multiplier by 0 0.85. However, I don't know the normal price. But what I do know is that the answer to this calculation is the new price, 21.25. So this is why this topic is called reverse percentages, because we are now going to carry out this calculation in reverse. So we are going to calculate 21.25 divided by 0 0.85, and that's going to give us our normal price, our original price of the shirt. So the calculation that I'm actually doing is the new price divided by 15% decrease as a decimal multiplier, that's going to tell me that the original price of the shirt was $25. So in order to answer a reverse percentage question, we need to calculate the decimal multiplier that we're dealing with based on the information in the question. We need to think about what the original calculation would have been. And then we do the calculation in reverse and we work a divide rather than a multiply because we're essentially dividing both sides of this equal sign by 0 0.85 this is what we would put in our calculator this is the answer to our question here is another example scott receives a five percent pay increase that's going to be important, 5% pay increase. His new salary is $756 per week. How much was his weekly salary before the pay increase? Our first two steps. First, we need to find the decimal multiplier that is associated with a 5% increase. So this time there is an increase that has occurred. So 100% add on 5 would be 105%. Then we divide by 100 to change it into a decimal. So the decimal multiplier, which is associated with a 5% increase, is 1.05. So the calculation we would do would be his old salary multiplied by 1.05. That's going to give his new increased salary. But because we don't know the original salary, but we do know the new salary, we can set up our calculation like this, and then we're going to think about the calculation in reverse. 
So we're going to do 756 divided by 1.05. That's going to give us the original salary, the old salary. So mathematically, we've divided both sides here by 1.05. This is the calculation that we input into the calculator. 756 divided by 1.05. Remember, this represents a 5% increase. That tells us that the original weekly salary was $720. Okay, here is another example. Feel free to work ahead of this example if you're feeling confident so far with the topic. John pays $171.50 for his car insurance. This price includes a 30% good driver discount. So we're dealing with a 30% decrease. How much is John's insurance before the discount is applied? So how we set up the question is we think about what is the decimal multiplier that represents a 30% discount. 100 take away 30 is 70 divided by 100 to change that percentage into a decimal 0.70. So the normal price of the insurance when multiplied by the decimal multiplier will give the actual price of the insurance after the discount has been applied. So in order for us to calculate the normal price before the discount is applied, we're going to do a reverse percentage. The calculation we're going to carry out is 171.50 divided by 0 0.70. So what goes into our calculator looks like that. And our calculator will tell us that the original price of the insurance before the 30% discount would have been $245. Mathematically speaking up here, what we have done is we've divided both sides by 0 0.70 to find the original price, the normal price of the insurance before the discount. Last example from me before I ask you to work through a few questions and tasks yourself. Again, you can work ahead of the example if you wish. Jane buys a house. The house increases in value by 7.5%. So we've got an increase of 7.5%. That increase takes place in the first year and, is, and the house is now worth £268,750. How much did Jane originally pay for the house? So first two things we need to think about. We need the decimal multiplier that represents a 7.5% increase. So 100 add 7.5 is 107.5 all divided by 100 so that's going to equal 1.075 this decimal here represents a seven and a half percent increase so now we think about the calculation the original purchase price of the house when multiplied by 1.075 is going to give the new increased value of the house 268,750. We want to calculate the purchase price. So what was the price of the house one year ago? So we take the new price, we divide by 1.075, and then we'll be left with the original purchase price. So this is our calculation. And once we calculate that on our calculator, we'll find that the original purchase price of the house was $250,000. So Jane originally paid $250,000 for her house. After one year, it increased by 7.5% in value and was now worth this amount. So you can see how much increase took place within the first year.
Okay, so here is a task I would like you to work through. I've put four worded reverse percentage questions on the screen. For each of the questions, I'd like you to show me your full working out. So you're showing me the full calculation you're, you're working through, including the decimal multiplier that you're using. And then, of course, you're going to show me your final answer. So I'd like you to work through all four questions. Could you pause the video at this point and have a go at each question? Okay, welcome back to the video. I'm just going to go ahead and show you my answers for each of these four questions. There we go. So you can see for each of the questions, I've shown you the calculation that you should have inputted into your calculator. And I've also shown you the decimal multiplier that should have been used in each question. Then you can see where your four answers come from. Very well done if you were able to get all four correct. Okay, we'll move on to one further task. Okay, so this time I've placed on the screen four exam questions. Each of the exam questions is worth three marks. And even though the wording in the question is a little bit different at times from other questions within this video, the method and the way you approach the question is exactly the same. So for each question, again, I'd like you to show me your full working out, including the decimal multiplier that you've used in your calculation, and then, of course, your final answer. If you could again pause the video at this point and have a go at all four questions. Welcome back to the video. I'll just go ahead and show you my answers. My answers for each question look like that. So hopefully at this point, all your four answers match up correctly. One point to note is in this question, we talk about VAT or VAT at a rate of 20%. Anything that includes VAT would mean that there's been a 20% increase, 20% added on. Because VAT, VAT is added on to the price of items uh, after the item has been priced up. So that would be representing a 20% increase. Okay, at this point, hopefully you've got all four correct and you're getting very comfortable with finding decimal multipliers, whether they are for an increase or a decrease. Very well done. If you've had a good go at this lesson, that will show a good understanding of the topic of reverse percentages.